Um, should we get him up? Colonel. Mm. Oh, well, lad. Come on, big lad. Oh, you've wintered well. I've wintered very well, by the way. <laughs> Once I retired three years ago, I didn't do any fitness ever since then, so excuse my big fat belly, but uh, no. Thanks, gents. Um, I didn't realise I could uh, <laughs> wait there, wait there. bring so many. Turn your fucking what? chair around a bit. You're fucking talking to the wall. Okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I didn't realise I could bring so many people in, but uh, thanks for coming. I'm hoping, hopefully, I can uh, give you a. A bit of an insight in uh, my whole career um, from when I was a young kid till the end and hopefully I'll get in a few stories somewhere along the line. So thanks for coming. Hope you enjoy the evening and uh, let's enjoy it. Uh, so obviously most people will know Colonel's career. Some people might know my career. A lot of people don't realise that Colonel, we grew up taught two doors apart when we were kids. Um, so Colonel plus his two brothers and my older brother. He was one of the reasons why I got into cricket. Um, and I remember my childhood playing in the back lane and that, but what is your earliest memories of, of cricket? What got you into cricket? Other than, f I'm guessing, obviously, Alan and Kevin stuff, but... Yeah, I think um, I think it goes back to... I think I was about 11 or 12, I think, and my older brother, Alan, uh, used to play for Bolden Sea. You probably know where that place is. Um, he used to go down there every Saturday, and I was just a young lad. My mum and dad split up, and um, I used to jump on the bus and go down and, and just watch him play cricket, really. And then we'd get on the bus back and go down to Castletown and where my dad lived. And that was the, the start of probably my cricket journey. I never, I had no interest in playing cricket whatsoever. Uh, football was my number one sport, and I would love to go back to play football now. But looking back, 17 years of professional cricket, I've... I think I make the decent choice, I think. Um, but I think cricket cricket was just something on the back burner, really. Football was always me. I was at uh, Man United when I was younger. I was at Middlesbrough till I was about 16. And then probably 15 is when I really started taking up cricket at a, a good standard, I think. Um, Me, you were playing for Man United Juniors and you chose cricket. Were you yeah, thinking? well... Be fair, I didn't really have much choices, really. I played Man United, then I was there from 11 till 13, two years. And then I got an offer to go to uh, Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough was, uh, it was a lot easier. My dad could take me there, and Manchester was quite a long way. Um, and then I was at Middlesbrough till I was about 16, but I started playing cricket probably about 13, I think it was, because my dad and Rushy's dad <coughs> and the whole... Hilton Castle lot. Uh, they set up a uh, they set up under thirteen cricket team, and that's where it all began for me. Under thirteen, so I was just I was just a kid just playing cricket on the streets. I've I've got a quick question here. You, you just grew up two doors apart. You're a Newcastle fan. He's not really. He's I'm not really not. Fan. Is that not true? That is not true. Yeah, I'll tell you exactly. Uh, well Colonel goes where he gets. He, he goes where he gets free tickets. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, right, that's so that's fine. I got a freebie anywhere. tonight, so that's good. A few free pints. I'm happy. Uh, yeah. No. I, um. Well, young age. My dad used to take us down to Roker Park. So very young age, used to go to Roker Park. He used to make like a little seat in the uh, Roker end, like a little wooden seat where you just sit on it. And uh, I think uh, Marco Gabidini and Peter Davenport and. Uh, Tim Carter, can you remember Tim Carter? He was oh, he was useless, him, wasn't he? <laughs> he just kept kicking it out. Um, so that was the that was a uh, that was a time when football was. We used to go down Saturday every Saturday home game. We used to go Roker End, and we used to, my dad made a seat sat there and watch it. And that that's where I grew up. But then, but uh, my whole my whole livelihood, I lived in Washington. So literally, I'm in the middle of middle of Sunderland, close to Newcastle. So I'm literally right in the middle. Um, and every time I went into Sunderland, this is like later on in my, I just got punched. <laughs> I just couldn't stand it. I, I used to go to the pubs. I used to get punched. I used to do this. I used to get punched. And then I literally deviated over to Newcastle, and, and that's where I've set up life for the last probably about 14, that's 15 years. That's some years. of that runs in the family, because I've been out with our Kevin a few times, one curl and his brother, and I reckon every time I've been out with him, he got punched as well. I've seen them both throw a few punches back, mind. 
Yeah, I, 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 got brought, I got brought up on a council estate, <laughs> same as uh, most people, and if you don't look after yourself, you've got to give it, don't you? So, um, and I've got myself in trouble every now and then, but yeah, Sunderland wasn't for me. I used to go watch them every day, but now I, I quite enjoy watching football now, uh, but I do go anywhere where I get free tickets. I'm not that bothered <laughs> about getting a season ticket for Sunderland, season ticket for Newcastle. I've got no interest in that. Go wherever. Just go wherever. So, Durham, start up obviously talking about your journey career. Sign for Durham. Can I remember your debut? Uh, no, uh, no, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, sort of. But if pe people people might know me, people might not know me. I quite enjoy the beer, so I probably played half of my career under the influence of alcohol. Um, but <laughs> Pro but <generally> probably, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Fuck her, I would have had four hundred more wickets. <laughs> hey, uh, wait, uh, hey. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, no, I think my, my biggest break came. Uh, obviously, uh, Jeff Cook. Everyone knows Jeff Cook. I would imagine if he's, he was a, he was a big father figure for me. I lost me I lost my dad when I was young, so I only had my mom and my brothers and family and vice versa. So Jeff Cook was a big influence in my cricketing career. Um, he he spotted me somehow. We um, I think. When I first got spotted, I was under 15, I think it was. Uh, my brother, Kevin, not the, the one in between us, he, he used to be the wicketkeeper of Hilton, under 18s. I thought, all right, yeah, yeah. But I was like, I used to like being in goal, I used to play. And she says, oh, would you like to go wicketkeeper for the under 18s? I was like 15 year old, give or take. Uh, I said, oh, yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to be a wicketkeeper. I want to dive around. I love diving in the mud. And I was just that sort of kid who loved to get around and do whatever. So then I did it on a Tuesday night, I think it was, at Hilton. So uh, I think we had the likes of David Batty. I'm not sure if anybody knows who David Batty was, but he was a, he was quite quick them days. He was quite quick. He was a good good bowler, and um, he's, he's a very good cricketer, really. Um, and he was a bit... He was a bit quick but he was a bit wayward and I used to love diving down leg side and doing this and I just loved it and that's where my my whole love of cricket and wicket keeping was part of me just being the jack of the lad, want to dive around and, and do all that so that's where the earliest part of my career was under 15s when I really thought about being a being a bit of a cricketer really so Jeff Cook invited me down to um, to Durham I uh, went down, I was like in like a, a cap of t shirt and some nice little poppers and Adidas poppers. Can you remember the Adidas poppers? <laughs> they were proper trousers. I them. Had the fucking Schneidies, me. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't quite get the Adidas ones, I had the Still just the two stripes. Yeah, they were proper they were proper trousers them days. And and I grew up, didn't have much money or whatever, so went down and said, Oh yeah, we'd like to offer you a, a, a an academy contract. Oh Jesus, oh yeah, okay, I'll do that. As you do, you go, okay, yeah, I'll do that. But I was still playing football at the time. So them days you could do football and cricket. Like one was in the winter, one was in the summer. So you could probably get away with doing both of them. F but football was always my number one. Then this came along. I said, yeah, yeah I'll do I'll, I'll give it a go. Um, and, and that's where it all started, really. Um, and then go back to, to my debut. Um, oh, God. You, you look at their Durham Cricket Board. Can you remember the uh, Durham Cricket Board? They used to have games when they used to play in the uh, one-day competitions against, like, um, Glamorgan, all the first-class counties. And um, I played for them. I think it was uh, Sean Burbeck, yep. uh, Blank Iron, uh, the guy from Robson, is it, from Burnmore? He was a he was a decent cricketer. So they so I was just a young lad then. I thought, oh yeah. And then we played, we got drawn against uh, Glamorgan. And Glamorgan had um Kasprovitz. Can you remember Kasprovitz? This is one of the best shots I've ever he seen, was, by the way. He was he was quick. I was just I was just I was probably I think I was like seventeen, give or take. I'm not sure exactly how old I was, but and Kasprovitz came in. I, I was batting at like eight. I was never really a batter. I just I just stopped the stopped the ball from going to the boundary. That's Basically, what my nickname was at the end of my career, speed bump rather than wicket keeper. Um, but generally, <laughs> I think Casper's coming in. I was at eight, so I was a bit of a flamboyant. Anything pitched up, I was just whacking it, and that carried on probably through my career. Um, and I hit this shot at Darlington Cricket Club. Right, he bowled it quite wide and full. I hit this thing over cover for six. Right. And I was 17 at the time. Wow, that was the best. Did anyone shot. ever? Did anyone ever go, darling, when they had the football ground at the back? 
So so he was hitting it towards the football towards the football end and the the big um the floodlights are in the corner. This fucker, it went halfway up the floodlights, and the floodlights are what, 40, 40 yards, 50 yards behind the boundary? And where you stood there, I was what I remember watching, thinking, what the fuck's he just. This, this <laughs> bloke's played for Australia. Do you know what it is? And he's just belted him over mid off. The fuck it, 120 mate, meters? Mate, the funny thing is, his brother's played one of the best fucking shots I've ever seen, which again, your Alan, at Ashbrook, played a cover drive into the flats. He hit. got it from me, I think. He fuck it, man. <laughs> but older than you, isn't he? He but got he it from not. me. You wouldn't have hit many shots in Who the offside taught, in your uh, career, have you? No, 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 no. Who taught the mustard to cover drive? Because Alan hit, honest to God, it, it, and I'm not just saying this, this is not all prepa- like pre planned, but Alan hit the best cover drive for six I've ever seen in my life that just hit, went flat and hit the flats, like the newer flats. So. Yeah, I think it must just run in the, the, the van. Rushy can't bat like that. <laughs> I've, I've actually got a good cover <laughs> you drive. I've got a very good I've cover good drive. So I'll give you that one. Five. Yeah, so that was, like, that, was my, uh, that was my claim to fame, if that makes sense. Um, and from that day, probably, uh, probably a week later, give or take, uh, my, f- my debut is in a one-day game, 50-over game, uh, against, <coughs> against Lancashire. And I was buzzing. I was like, oh, yes, I love it. I've just gotten the first team. I've got my first game. Played against Lancashire. And Lancashire had uh, that flint off, that Jimmy, the hard uh, Chapel. Or oh, who else was there? Go on, drop a few more I will. I will drop a few names. These, they had a very good side. And uh, I, I think I went in about six or seven again. And um, so I went in first ball. After, after the week before, uh, I think it was Flint. No, it was uh, Chapel or Jimmy who bowled it, I think it was. And um, pitch it up outside off stump. I tried to hit this thing over cover for six <laughs> again. Nicked it first ball straight to Flint off walked off. <laughs> so that was my uh, that was my claim to fame. And then and then it was just one of them. Is that not do you not reckon, is that not cricket in a nutshell? It is the ultimate leveler. One one game you can be on top of the world. The next game you can think oh, yeah, I've just took seven wickets. I've just scored a hundred last week. You either get whacked all over or you nick off first ball. It's the ultimate uh, leveller. Yeah, cricket. That's why, that's why we play the game, isn't it? Everyone has probably played the game somewhere in this room and they've enjoyed it for however many years watching it or whatever it is. But but yeah, cricket is just a, it's just a gentleman's game. It's You have some ups, you have some downs, but end of the day, if you have that one big innings or you get them 10 wickets or whatever it is, then generally it is such a... It's a fascinating game and I think... <sighs> It's it's just one of them things that you just do and yeah it is just a level but you have some ups you have some downs and I've seen people have some ups and downs but the the better players or the better people just try to find a bit of a level where if you're high you still try and keep a bit of a level but you've got people who go from there to there and the right miserable bastards <laughs> they get out I'm gonna go for a run I'm gonna do this fuck who's off. Th- you've just nicked it off just fucking get on with it who's the who's the who's the best player you've played with. Who's been good at staying at that level? So we've played Ooh. with good players. Um, you look at someone like Woody. You would have played with Woody early in his career. Woody is the ultimate up and downer. Oh, Mark, well, oh, absolutely. Woody is a uh, Woody. Obviously, bowls fast and he bowls it's either short or full, whichever one it is. But and Woody is like that. Woody's like that. Where, be fair, he doesn't drink, so that's probably his <laughs> one one issue. He doesn't drink, so every day he's like a... But he's fucked to start with, huh? He's fucked <laughs> to start one with. one issue. <laughs> <laughs> he's bollocks to start doesn't with. But, but generally, he, go, he goes up, he, he <laughs> goes high, he goes low. But And, and even... He's, he's, he's quite hard work, really, Woody. If you, if you spend a bit of time with him and if he's doing well or if he's getting dropped or getting whacked or whatever, you might as well just leave him alone. But I, I wish I played England now because he plays three games a year and he gets a 500 grand a year. I wish I was on that. <laughs> Fucking absolutely. Yeah, aye, aye. That's why I sing aye. songs let's, every let's fucking day. No wonder he's always up. Aye, Christ. Right. Fuck, I would be, you know. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's talk a little bit about drinking, which is one of my fucking favourite subjects. <laughs> um, Colonel, have you ever fucking had a really, really heavy night <coughs> and then uh, got out and done the business the next day? I used to, by the way. A lot in my youth. Um, yeah. Friday nights I was fucking lethal. <coughs> Were you any good at cricket? Nah. 
No, but what I was really good at was staying up really, really well. I say staying up really late. I was really good at not going to bed on a Friday night and playing cricket all day on a Saturday. Yeah, I think most of us I was of us fantastic that. at that. <laughs> and I, w- I, w- I was brilliant. I was not never very he, good he at cricket. He'd need a bowler next year, don't they? He'd slide right in there, wouldn't he? <laughs> if you look... Hang on, we're going to do Q&A later on, Paul, right? <laughs> it's fucking it's calm yourself it's down, it's right? It's funny... Ah, you're probably you probably right. <laughs> you've probably right. seen me in a few cells as well, but that's fine. <laughs> hey, we're recording a fucking podcast here. He's sitting in his cell, he's got to edit something. Right, drinking. You yeah, fuck, yeah. I think when was the last... Go on. Going out in the drink. Oh, yeah. Turning up, doing the business the no, next year. It was really funny. I think early days, early days of my career. Um, oh, you're talking 17, 18, 19, give or take. Second team cricket. It was, it was the days where you used to just travel in cars to away games or wherever else it is, one drive, three sit in the back or however it works, and you would take you take three shirts, three pairs of jeans, a pair of brown shoes and a pair of black shoes. That is everything that you would take on a on a trip away. So every away trip was a bit like a stag do, um, and it, and it was it, it was bizarre. <laughs> it was bizarre because. Like Richie, Richie's been around it quite a bit. It it was literally every away trip. It was when you couldn't go to nightclubs and like trainers. I, when I you was just about to say, I remember playing a second team game in Surrey, right? I'm sure yeah. Rich was there. Literally, everyone in the team went out to this nightclub. Sorry, lads, you can't come in without shoes. Ten minutes later, as there was round the corner, there's about six. Was it Sus- Sussex, Horsham? There's about 16, or th- there is 16 lads plus a scorer in Asda buying, <laughs> buying George Brown shoes. Everyone walked in at this nightclub wearing the same pair of shoes for eight quid. The next day, everyone turns up to play this game of cricket and everyone's like, everyone's got blisters and sore feet. And <laughs> you wouldn't be getting anywhere just like that. Yeah, there, w- there was one game. I can't remember which one. Out. There was one game where you couldn't get in because you had trainers on or whatever it was. And we used to just put black socks over the trainers. <laughs> we used to get in and take them off. It was fabulous. And they were, they were the good old days. That's, I've got to admit, in today's, in today's cricket terms, personally, I think they're fucking boring. <laughs> All the youngsters are boring. They don't want to have a drink. They don't want to do, do anything bad. They, they've got to run freaking 2K in seven minutes, and they've got to look thi- fit like Rushy is now. But, but them day, them, you could... You could you could go out till two, three, four in the morning, come in, you oh, put your sunglasses on, go, whoa, that was a good night. What did you get up to last night? You think, Jesus Christ, but but you you you, you tend to you, you tend to work around that. Yeah. You, you get used to I got used to okay, as as we creep, I got used to having five, six, seven, eight pints a night, going to bed at eleven, twelve o'clock, waking oh up at twelve it o'clock. <laughs> was it right? So <laughs> you were with him for quite a bit this time. Was it five, six, seven pints? Was it 10, 11, 12 o'clock? <laughs> no, no one really knows. <laughs> Colonel was always the la- he was always the last one at the hotel. B- hotel boy was always the last one there. I think what what Johnny was trying to get at when he was mentioned, he did perform. This is where I'm getting at. So, this is before I start or before I start playing with the, with the first team and stuff. There's a fella called Mushtak Ahmed played for Sussex. Probably one of the best spinners of all time. And Kern went out and uh, belted a hundred. Um, oh, don't go too deep into that one because that one's coming later. Well, no, oh, we need well. to talk about it now. We're in fucking yeah, charge no, here, yeah. don't you? <laughs> yeah, but that's we need probably to talk about it now. Yeah, but that's, that's me finishing one, that man. We can't do any of that, man. All oh, right. Now you're frigging spoiled. I wish we'd had this conversation <laughs> fucking an hour ago. <laughs> you know, right. when you text someone, you say, mate, have you got like. How any stories, anything you don't want to talk about, like how do you want things to work? Me, I'm just easy, just go with the flow, me, like, <laughs> you're fucking bringing up, nah, 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 we'll deal with that later. Right then. <laughs> right, Colonel, what would you like to talk about next? Finisher. <laughs> no, but I think, I think, yeah, okay, I, I enjoyed a few beers. I, I performed pretty well doing it. Um, and not everybody could do that. I, I'm not trying to blow me on trouble here, but. I probably got immune to it somewhere along the line. Who was <laughs> who was the uh, when you started playing? Who were the I'm saying biggest trick? Who who was like the I don't know the socialites of the team? So oh. w- when you first when you 
with Neil when you were first team regular, week in, week out, um, what what was the side? What was the first team? Um, oh, a 2000 and I think it was about 2004, I think it was. Um, who was who was captain then? Uh, captain would have been, I think it would have been John Lewis, possibly. Um, maybe before that. Yeah, I think, I can't remember too much about the early days. Really. I'm sure someone will know. Um, someone in the room must know who was captain Googled about 2004. 2004. Dave um, Curry, ah, he must know. I can't remember. Be John Lewis was a was was a captain, and don't get me wrong. He did he did pick me. I think John Lewis picked me for the first team, um, and he was a very he was a very good trainer. He's he's quite fit at the time. Um, he's quite boring. He's a quite a boring individual, and he doesn't really give you that much. And be fair to him, he's done quite well. He's gone on, did a bit of coaching, did a bit of that, but he wasn't really my cup of tea. And he wouldn't like he wouldn't go and have a beer. He wouldn't. Do. So I just kept myself to myself. And I'm trying to think. You had the the likes of uh, Nicky Hatch. Can you remember Nicky Hatch? Um, you've got uh, Gary Pratt. So you got Gary Pratt. You've got Ian Patterson. Uh, you had Nicky Danny. Danny Law would have been around then. Danny Law would have been around. But I was I was very young at this. I was very young, so I can't really go in but but later in my career when I first I'm saying later in my career when I first really got into the big side like first team first team and everything else it was more uh we we had a, we had a great drinking team um I'm sure all the lads <laughs> Shit cricket team good drinking team well you say that you say that yeah we had a bit of a up and down year until 2006 2006 was like the the big year where Durham started winning some sort of Games or well, no, 2006 yeah. we stayed up Just by games. yeah we we st we we stayed up by one point I think it was, um I think not needed one batting point and they got pulled off. Was, up was about that the Otis Gibson yeah, special one, game? Yeah, yeah. So that 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 was the the time where I remember a lot of my stuff. So we had like of um, obviously we had Martin Moxon as a captain, uh, uh, as a coach. Martin Moxon, okay, bless him. Now he's he's struggling a little bit now with what's happening down down the road, but. Martin Moxon was the guy who probably turned Durham into a into a first class first class county. He he was very strict. He was very you had a like, shirt tie suited booted. Uh, you you had to be clean shaven. So he put the rules. If you're batting at ten o'clock, you're batting at ten o'clock. There's no like in between. And and that learned that taught me quite a lot. And after every game and whatever else, he says, lads, I don't care what you do tonight, but if you go out, enjoy yourself, but don't get locked up. And that was his little motto. His motto was, do not get locked up, but go and enjoy yourselves. And we did. And be fair, we, we, we went out, we enjoyed ourselves, we, we partied till 2, 3, 4 in the morning. And we had the likes <laughs> of... Um, right. We had Dale don't Benkenstein. He was a good drinker. Uh, we had Michael DiVinuta. He was an even better drinker. Um, and then I think somewhere along, like, Rushy decided to want to be teetotal for a year. <laughs> he was a fucking disaster for that year. <laughs> he was he was the most this miserable. This is what I'm talking about. He was the most miserable fucker I've ever met. Right? Because Rushy used to love a he used to love a beer. Right? Oh, no, yeah, I took fucking loads of wickets, so. Fuck! I'm not bothered about the wickets, <laughs> but you're fucking boring. Right? He he literally he he, he, he asked, uh, what was the charity you did it for? Was it um, why did you do it? No, it wasn't. Is he here tonight? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was, it was, it was, it was, no. was it PC or something like that? No, I think it was uh, a PC. No, so Rushy was... was um, children in need. Oh, children in Rushy decided... And Rushy loved a beer. He loved a beer, but he, he goes about his business quite quietly and quite shrewd, if that makes sense. I would love to tell you a lot of stories, but I can't. Um, but he this this time he decided, I'm going to stop off the beer and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just... See how it goes. He might have I don't know how many wickets he how many wickets did he take in that season? I can't remember. Anyway, he, he said he had a <laughs> well bold. He had a good season, but he was the most miserable sod I've ever met. Uh, and uh, honestly, like he was my cousin, he was he went to bed at seven o'clock, he, he got absolutely up for breakfast at six o'clock. <laughs> absolute he bullshit. Was what is he, he, absolute was bullshit. he was he was the most boring thing I've ever met. And, and you talk about Woody. Uh, no, you no, talk no, about no. Woody being a non alcoholic a non a non drinker. And then he got Rushy who who was he was the most miserable thing in that year. But anyway, well, if you went to bed at seven o'clock, why are you a fucking newborn baby? <laughs>
But yeah, so go back to the uh, go back to the go back to Martin Moxon was. He's ah, how have you got? How have you gone from <laughs> Martin Moxon to me not drinking? Yeah, he's well, he's fucking yeah. shit in his cell here. <laughs> <laughs> he's fucking gone. Look at the fucking amount of editing I'm gonna have to do with this podcast. Yeah, so Moxon was the one who probably set Durham on a good track to be a successful team. Uh, I think Moxon left uh, the end of 2006. I think that's when he went back to. Um, this is how far you've gone off your radar, right? If he left in 2006, I didn't make my debut until 2012. I haven't gone off the radar. Well, you've just mentioned me in amongst Martin Moxon. If he left in 2006, I didn't <laughs> play first last game in 2012. I didn't, see, I didn't see you did play under Martin Moxon. But you've just been talking about me. I was talking about you for not drinking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right, right. So, sorry, <laughs> go on. K- keep going, anyway, keep going. <laughs> Yeah, oh, so yeah, um, no. Moxon <laughs> said Durham was where. So uh, he, he signed Mitchell Claydon. He signed Michael Divinutu uh, from uh, Derby and Mitchell Claydon from, um, from Yorkshire. And then as soon as he signed Michael Divinutu and um, Mitch, Mitch Claydon, Livy, it was he left and went back to Yorkshire. So Jeff inherited a very good, well-structured team who've been with Martin Moxon for probably four or five years, I think, give or take. And Moxon was very down the line, all about execution, all about looking well, doing this, doing everything right, if that makes sense. And then in 2007, Jeff Cook took over. So Jeff was the total opposite to to what Moxon was. We brought in Dale Benkenstein, and that's when Durham started being very success, successful, but we were very good drinkers in that time as well. From 2006 to 2013, we had a very, very good team who enjoyed a lot, a lot of alcohol, and we enjoyed the winner <laughs> mentality, and that's where Durham, that's, I was a big part of it, but everybody else did it, but we had a great team, team, team motto, team togetherness. It was amazing, and that's where Durham started to become successful, and that all came down to being a good drinking team. <laughs> when... <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my kind of team, to be <laughs> honest. That you you obviously made the step up and and started playing for England. Um, what was the uh, did the England team embrace your drinking culture? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got to admit, I, I was I was quite well behaved when I when I when I played England. Um, obviously, you, you're in a, you're in a hotel. You. I did well, when I got picked for England. It was uh, 2007, 2008. I uh, got in. Matt Pryor got injured in the World Cup, T uh, Twenty World Cup in South Africa, and I had a very good year in 2007 or six in the Pro 40. So that's where I put my name in the hat, and and then all of a sudden you get the phone call. You go to England, do whatever. So I was quite well behaved. I was in my room. I was doing what it is, and I didn't really, I didn't drink that much out there. That's um, where you went wrong, isn't it? Well, n- no. Does that affects your performance. No, I didn't. I didn't drink before the games, but once the game finished, I let my hair down a little bit, um, and that's probably why I never played England again. Um, there's, there's, there was a, there was a number of, um, a number of stories from that, from that tour, uh, which I'll, I'll go into as well now. Um, so, uh, New Zealand 2007 was one of, one of my best. I love New Zealand. Great place. Great people. And uh, I got quite pally with uh, um, with one of the New Zealand lads called uh, Jesse Ryder. Everyone know Jesse Ryder? Yeah. I think he had a bit of a drinking issue as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he had a bit of a drinking issue, and I, I think he had a few a, a few more issues than what I had. But generally, uh, we got on quite well. Um, so every time we finished a one day game, we would um, cost. New Zealand's quite small, so you're close in the same hotels and you, you, you mix with people, have a few beers with them after the game and vice versa. And, um, and me and Jesse got on really well. Um, and, and it was one of them where we, we went out on a, on a number of occasions uh, after the games, after the one days, because you'd finish a game, you do the one day, and then you fly to the next, the next place you're going to play the game. So that night you go, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go hard here. So we, we did that. So me and Jesse just yeah, get bombs and we're doing all this stuff. And then um, 
Yeah, so Jesse, if you can remember in that One Day series, um, Jesse Ryder, um, he he had a, a move away from the One Day side because he put his um, his fist through the uh, window. I don't know if you remember that, but it was, um, and I was I was literally with him that night. So we, <laughs> so on the bus going to the airport the next morning, and um, sitting in like a little 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 van going to the airport, and I'm just sat there too, just mind my own business and sat at the back, I was next to Michael Vaughan, Hoggard, Harmy. So I was just sat in the mix, just like being the lad, lad. And they came on the radio, Jesse Riders out of the um, out of the one day series. Uh, he's done his ligaments in his hand, putting his hand through uh, um, through like a window in a, in a nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and, and I, I don't know what made me say this, but I literally sat at the back of the bus and said, well, he was okay when I left him at three o'clock. <laughs> So you had you had Peter Moores, you had Peter Moores in the front, <laughs> you had a uh, collie, you had a collie in the front, you had a few in the front seat, and I was in the middle. And as soon as I said that, would you say that was like the downturn of your international career? No, there's there's there's, there's, there's a few more. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that was that was just one of them, and 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 no one, you just think, what the fuck have I just said there? And you're thinking, so like all the lads are like laughing and doing. Peter Moore's in the front, going, look at me in the mirror and going, "You grumpy fucker!" Oh, he was, he was horrible. He was, he's all like little one percenters, and he was very intense and very. Yeah, I, di- I didn't, I, I didn't, I got on well with him, but I didn't. He wasn't my favourite person. Yeah. Um, but that was just that's just the way it was. You just had to, and we had Andy Flower as well, I think, and he's a bit of a miserable son as well. <laughs> um, but generally. Yeah, that, that was just the start of my uh, international career. So that was, I think I was after the third one day in, third one day in Auckland, I think it was. So yeah, that, so I, was, I, was, I was good up until then. And then that whole trip just went a little bit, uh, a little bit pear-shaped. And then um, we came back from the New Zealand trip. And um, no, I've got one more story, sorry. So uh, yeah, the fourth one day, I think it was in Napier, we, I think it was that big draw, which was 324, played 324, which was a really, really... Them days was quite a lot of runs in a 50-over game. And um, that moment, uh, you had... Um, in Navy, mm-hmm. you had all the ECB individuals coming out. So you had uh, Giles Clark. Remember Giles Clark, the, the, the chairman of the ECB? And he's very posh and very... Probably is not up my alley, if that makes sense. And then you had his his wife. His wife was his wife was lovely. She was nice. She had a chatty. You do what? But Giles was a little bit. He, he used to wear like random random outfits and like some that you just wouldn't wear really. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about random outfits. <laughs> and um, sorry, fuck <laughs> you. And and, and what you wear there? Sorry. <laughs> We were talking Freak. about random outfits. He texts us this afternoon. He fucking tries to tell us what to do, right? And he's going, I think we should dress really smart tonight. <laughs> really smart. Oh. You're a fucking 40 year old. You look like a fucking 40 year old boy band member. <laughs> Is that a boy band, like? <laughs> yeah, so um, go back and go back. Uh, where was I there? I forgot now. Uh, where was I? We were in Napier. Oh, yeah, so Giles yeah. Clark was there. So after the draw, it was a, it was quite a successful draw, really, because I think uh, a guy called Howe got got a big 100, and he got them to 324 for the draw, whatever it was. So there, we go back, and we go to the we go to another bar just around from the hotel, and uh, me and my mate Jesse Ryder again. <laughs> <laughs> so me and my mate Jesse Ryder, we uh, we bumped into each other, standing on bars, singing songs, and all, all, the, every, all the lads were there, all the bar, me army, Everyone was just really having a really good time. So we go to the bar, we sing songs, we go back at, I don't know, 12 o'clock, give or take, and uh, you had uh, Jazz Clark, all the all the management team, Peter Moores, in the bar, so you know, I'll to come back, Giles wants to, sp- I, d- I didn't really know Giles, to be fair. So I got back, and I had a, cu- I was, I was, I had a couple of beers, and um, and I don't know, I said, I said something stupid, I said, oh, Giles, I can't believe what you've come as, you look like a fucking tramp. And that was the that was the ECB chairman of the ECB, and I've literally just called him a fuck. 
fucking scruffy tramp. <laughs> and and that was another one I said, oh, God, what have I just done there? So oh, the lads are laughing in behind. Go, oh, the colonel's just done this. He's just said this to Giles, blah, blah, blah. I said, but, but your wife's beautiful. And, um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and it, honest, and, and it was another one of them stupid things where you go, you fucking dickhead, colonel. But generally, that's where the whole England thing, yeah. And then we went over to uh, Sri Lanka in 2008. Johnny, I might go next door, are you? We're relatives. Oh, sorry. It's like I'm a fucking foxy, but <laughs> I'm worse than foxy. <laughs> Has anyone listened to the podcast before with foxy? Foxy I don't does know what you want me to do. I'm f- I was fucking no, no, enjoying no, no, no. Listen, I was no, keep, enjoying keep going, I was keep in going, the keep fucking intro- <laughs> interrupted you. Sorry. Right, you went to Sri Lanka. Oh, yeah, Sri Lanka. So we'll go on your podcast in a second. So Sri Lanka, uh, we'll just give you this quick one. So we're in uh, Colombo, um, and then we, uh, we, I think we won the one days or whatever it was. I think we haven't won in Sri Lanka for 25 years, give or take. So the first game, I think we got beat. Oh, my, I'm not sure if we won or lost. So I had a few beers, and you, you go out after the game, you have a few more beers. And then I didn't, I didn't get in in time. We li- were travelling up to Candy that next morning to play the next one day in two days' time. So we um, we went out. We had a few beers, and I I I, I met I met a, f- a few good people, and uh, I said, oh, Jesse yeah. Ryder wasn't there, was he? No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. So <laughs> it was like it was like, it was like <laughs> it was like it was like commission the people and that sort of thing. And it was it was really good night. And uh, I was out till early hours, and I was a bit ropey as well. So the next, so I rushed in. We're leaving at nine o'clock. I literally got a, a tuk tuk about um, tuk tuk in about. Oh, about 10 to 9, give or take. And we're leaving at 9 o'clock. So my bags weren't packed. Anything was not packed. So all the lads go, Colonel, are you here? Are you here? Yeah, I'm here, I'm here. And I said, all right, okay. So I come back. I came down. I was about five, ten minutes late for the bus. So all the lads are at the back of the bus and doing what they do. So no one, you, no one you're late on the bus. And you're, like, you're thinking, oh, my God, what have I done here? So then you just get, like, the, the nearest seat. So I got a seat near the front of the bus. And the candy was about three hours up the road, maybe a bit longer. So I got this, saw the lads are laughing and giggling and do all that. So I got on the bus, like, a bit cheapish. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, I sat in front of Peter Moores. Uh, yeah, I sat in front of Peter Moores. A little bit ropey and do whatever. And then within five minutes of going on this bumpy road, I literally, Peter Moores had his laptop out on the back of the, uh, on the, back of the bus. I literally just pulled my chair back, <laughs> knocked his laptop <laughs> off, his, off his knee, all over, and the lads were absolutely <laughs> in stitches. And I was like, <laughs> not, not a foot, not so a fucking brilliant start. Here, and that's the no, and Peter Moore's was not happy. He was not happy, and that was um, yeah. It, and then there's a couple more as well, but I'll I'll go onto them ones. I'll go onto them ones later. But let's go onto the podcast. Come on. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. Pod, podcast <laughs> fucked me. Is that not <laughs> this podcast <is> fucked? <laughs> Is that not what you want? That you want ultimate honesty from people. In in a short phrase, uh, as little words as possible, how would you describe your international career? Um, boy, um, in one word. One word. Entertaining. entertaining. Do you, all jokes aside, though, right? I, I know we've had a laugh there. On a serious note, do you look back at that with a bit of regret? Do you think, fucking, I wish I'd just. Reined it in a little bit. I wish I'd have just done this or done that. Do you ever think I could have played? Because you were fucking phenomenal at times. You you were you were a fantastic batsman, really good keeper. Do you think I wish I'd have just reined it in that just that little bit more? Not enjoyed myself as much. Clearly, you fucking had a great time, which I'm I reck- I'm, I'm I'm fucking into that. By the way, but do you do you think you could have played more for England if you had just just reined it in that little bit more? Do you think you could have done a bit See, more? See, right? sorry, I'd probably go the other way. Do, do you not think you reined it in too far and you went away from what got you where you got to? So in, in your career, you know, for, I've known you forever, you were you. When you got picked for England, did you think, right, I've now got to behave like this. I'm playing for England. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to abide by certain rules. Did that hold you back? Um, yeah, yes, I think a little bit. Um. Because you were you were a, you were a bloke and a cricketer who played with freedom throughout, and you listen to him talk about having nights out and drinking and that. 
He's still one of the best wit keepers that has ever kept for Durham. He was fucking incredible. Whether he was out the night before, he turned up and he performed for Durham every single day. He, w he was outstanding. Um, I always think, I don't know, look, listen to you there, did you rein it in a bit too far to try and fit in to what their mode was? Yeah. I don't know, yeah. sitting in a nightclub till three o'clock in the morning is reining it in. <laughs> Fuck yeah, me, fella. What yeah, were you like? But it what were you like yeah. before that? It was fine. I did. I don't get me. I did reel it in before the games. I didn't really go out, but once the games finished, I let my hair down. Probably a bit yeah. too much. But yes, I think going back to what Rushy said, I think I did try and fit into the ECB culture. Probably more than more than I should have, if that makes sense. Don't get me wrong. I had, I had a, I had a good career there, but I did try and fit in and. When I let me hair down, let it down rather than continue through the whole series, if that makes sense. So, yeah. so no your drinking for England was up and down where you should have been just I that straight just level. should have been on that straight <laughs> level. Yeah. On the fucking session all the way through. <laughs> Consistency's a key with your fucking drinking, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but um, go back to the. Go back to your um, I don't think I would have played England a lot more. Um, I think I had my time. I think. Okay, people think, well, you um, you could have played England longer, you could have done this, you could have done that. But if you look at if if you just take football for the for the time being, once you're a goalkeeper, it's really really difficult to knock off number one wicketkeeper. The only reason I got to play England was Matt Pryor broke his finger or broke his hand or whatever it was. So that's when I got my call up. But as soon as he was back, because he was in England for two, three years before me, give or take, I've, I still believe I was a better keeper than him. Um, but I was always one year behind him, under 19, England 19s. I was playing 18s, he was 19, he was one step ahead of me. He was always one step ahead of me going through the age groups to international. To He was always at one year older who got the best opportunity before I did. Andy came from Sussex and I don't know if it's true, if it's not true, but generally they tend to pick people from down south rather than I was just uh, that was literally the question on my lips there. Do you think being from up here, being from in the northeast of England, do you think that hinders or helps you? It it definitely for me, it definitely feels like it's a hindrance. And you'll know that and all like yeah, I think, think I think I think it's from changed. Where you yeah, from. I think I think it's changed a lot now. I think the they're quite happy to have people from up and down the country and vice versa. But I think them days it were it there was a little bit of a a southern a southern connect if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I think there is something there. But I was I was never going to be I was never going to knock prior off his perch. Yeah. He was batting at number five in the tests. He was keeping, he was in one day, he was whacking it. So on that front, I don't think, even if I behaved myself and I didn't let me hair down every now and then, I still don't think I would have played more for England. So I think I was just in the wrong wrong era, if that makes sense. So it was all worth it then, really, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, no, nah, I think he should have gone out more. <laughs> if he knew he was getting knocked off, why didn't he just be himself? Fair enough. Graham Swan. Still mates with him? <laughs> yeah, Swanny, Swanny. Yeah, Swanny. So, Swanee. so everyone know the story, Graham Swan's autobiography. What did yeah, he say yeah, about Graham you, Swan. Uh, I got on really well with Swanny. Um, he was a bit hacked off when, uh, when when I got picked to go to Sri Lanka. He was a bit hacked off because he, he got called up again to go to Sri, La um, Sri Lanka. That was his... He played England whenever it was before that. But he opened the baton for uh, not in the one days. So obviously when the team comes out and, and vice versa, Swanee thought he was going to open the baton for England. And as it turned out, I was in the, I was there. I opened the baton and, um, and Swanee was a bit peed off about that. Um, but Swanee was, uh, Swanee was great. I, I got on really well with Swanee. He talks a good game now. He, he talks a lot of shite now as well. But I got on really well with Swanee. You go out for a bite to eat and just listen to story after story after story from Graham Swan. If you're watching well. Swanee, we'd still love to have you on the <laughs> podcast, Paul. <laughs> so he said that, not me. And um, yeah, and and then I never I never thought anything of it really. And then one day the 
the Sun newspaper had the, um, I, I think Swanee had his autobiography coming out, whatever, so he used the Sun newspaper to to promote it, if that makes sense. And um, and the, the main headline on the back of the back of the sun, I think it was, mustard was a source of fun when he was of England or something <laughs> like that. And I was like, you absolute dick. I can't believe you just chucked me in the middle of the Sun newspaper and Livy collared me for that. I said, you are a wanker. But I, I, I still get on well with him now, but you just think, you, you use me to sell your autobiography. Fuck me, why? What is that? that? What is that? You should write a book. What does that come down to? What does that come down to? If you wrote a book, how much of your career would you put in it, or could you put in it? <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll not answer that. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I have, I have thought about doing autobiography, um, a long but, uh, or a book, or whatever it is. But uh, no, I'll have to wait till I'm divorced to do that. <laughs> <laughs> right, optimism, right there. <laughs> Tell you what. There must be some family loyalty in this room. Because <laughs> I'd sport a colonel and I went, I need to stitch this fucker up tonight. Because he stitched me up a few times on the podcast. You couldn't think, you couldn't even, he's that boring. You couldn't even think of anything, could you? Do you yeah. want one? I'll give you one. I don't want one. And he one was my fucking roommate at the, t- the time, the game. Oh, did you just room together? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Oh. I'll set the way, right, and Colonel might be able right, to fill in the blank. <laughs> Scarborough, 2013. Scarborough, 2013. Day two. Day two. Okay. <laughs> well, he oh, was yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I do remember this one. <laughs> right, he was yes, as bad I as me do then. I remember this one, yeah. Is that when we had the pub crawl? <laughs> is, that the, is that the one we had a pub? Oh, yes, he didn't rock in, did he? <laughs> ah, yes, ah, I do one. remember that one. Yeah, I do oh, remember that one. Oh, yeah, but there's so many. Yeah, yeah oh, yeah, Rushy, right. So, literally, this was so funny. It, it was just not right on Rushy, because Rushy's quite a, he's quite a quiet character. He's, he keeps himself to himself. He, he just nips in here, there, and everywhere, and, and he just, he just, he's quite smug, if that makes sense. And um, and oh, this, Joe, this Joe, just be careful of them cameras, <laughs> Alan. <laughs> and this, uh, I'm still playing. And this, um, <laughs> and this, 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 this game was so <laughs> Scarborough is a Scarborough is a place. I'm sure you've all been to Scarborough, and it hasn't got any good hotels. It hasn't got, it hasn't got uh, the shit all. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's just say let's, it, lie, it's, let's not yeah, beat around the yeah. bush. It's a let's shit all. Yeah. It, it, it is it's a shit It's a bit of a dump. They've got they've got a casino. They've got uh, a couple of B and Bs and whatever. So second day, second day, Scarborough. We decided because the hotel was probably about twenty minute, half an hour walk, give or take. Nice day, whatever. So we decided about three to hours with the pubs in between. Yeah. So we decided we oh, I'm just going to walk back. So a few of us walked back, and we decided w- once we got out the ground, let's just do a bit of a pub crawl on the way back. So each pub. Walk straight through the middle of town, up to the hotel, whatever. So straight from the ground, in our in our uh, in our uniform, uh, polo shirts and chinos or whatever it is, and we decided to do a pub crawl. <laughs> <laughs> so let me just each pub went in. We have a beer next pub, and there's quite a lot of them on that stretch. <laughs> so you, you, I think we I think we decided to get in about I don't know. I got in about eleven o'clock from this from the game finishing, which is about half six sh- half six ish. We got back to the room, or the, the, the hotel, at about 11 o'clock. And you can imagine there's probably 20 pubs in between Scarborough Cricket Club and the hotel. So we, we do whatever. So then, on that night, I think Stokesy came down from... Um, he must have been away doing something. So Stokesy came down. Stokesy enjoyed a beer as well. And... and Stokes, like, fresh as a day, he hasn't been drinking, so then he takes Rushy out with him. So we get back at 11 o'clock after a big pub crawl, a big, big pub crawl. So Rushy decides, instead of going to bed, he's going to go out with Stokesy for a couple of beers at 11 o'clock till whatever. Rushy didn't even turn up the next day. <laughs> you didn't turn up, I did, did. I was about 15 <laughs> minutes late. <laughs> didn't turn up. It's I, t- a I turned up to Scarborough, bearing in mind there's no team bus because you walk on a morning, so I've, I've got up, roomed, roomed with him, he's gone, I've woke up, 27 missed calls on my phone, like, so I've like stumbled along Scarborough Front Street, thought I need someone to sort of, called in a little news agent, picked up a bottle of orange Lucas Aid, thought this'll do the trick, it fucking didn't, 
you come into you come into the the main gate at Scarborough, and you're on the top of the hill, and you walk down, and like I'm stumbling down this, and they're all playing footy, and you can just see like one head turns, and you're like, oh, there's Rushy. <laughs> Someone else turns round, there's Rushy. The coach turns round, that's fucking Rushy. <laughs> so I go in the <laughs> go in the dressing room like as quick as I can, get changed, and I run out to join them playing footy in this warm-up. My God, <laughs> the ball rolled. It was <laughs> literally, you could have just gone. And I've played centre-half, and I tried to kick this ball. <laughs> I've missed it. I've tripped over my feet, and I've hit the deck. And I've just gone, oh, fuck. And everyone's just gone, oh, shit. It's worse than we thought. So anyway, we were batting at the time. Um, so we went in after the warm-up and that. I've obviously just fucking hit the benches, <laughs> flat out. Jamie Harrison, I owe him so much for this. So I was, I think at the time I was meant to be batting 10. And they've sent Jamie in at 10, now I'm batting 11. Jamie helped Richo. I think Richo got 100. Um, but him and, him and Jamie Harrison batted for probably three hours, four hours of this <laughs> game while I was flat out. I was next in the bat, and I promise you, I was so fast asleep, it was unbelievable. When I went in the bat, we were, I don't know, we were, we were in front. Um, Richo needed four for his hundred. And I was like, mate, I'm not sure if I'm going to get you there. Like, if you get a chance, go for it. Um, <laughs> and at the time, Kane Williamson was bowling before he got done for chucking it. Um, and he's hit what, Richo just bombed one for six. And I was like, oh, brilliant. And then I think I got out the next over. Um, <laughs> But yeah. I, I, w I was, I was in a, I was. A, that's the worst I've ever been turning up to a game, and I did. F I, f I felt horrendous. Um, but that in itself was one of the greatest games of cricket I've ever played in. Bar that that one day where I was like, I was a dead man walking. <laughs> um, but I, I was rooming with Colonel, like he'll, he loved the drinks. So I'm blaming you, <laughs> <laughs> and Stokesy. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, it was. A, it was. A, it Scarborough's always a good trip, though, isn't it? Yeah. You don't want to go to the hotel, so you just go to the casino till five in the morning. <laughs> and then you get up, and then you go play cricket. <laughs> then you do the same again for four days. So it's quite a good, uh, it's quite a good trip. Good trip. How did it end at Durham? Oh. Um, yeah, it was. Um, oh God. Yeah, I think it was uh, 2016. Did everyone hear that question? <laughs> How did it end at Durham? Well. <laughs> Was it, no, no, it was what was that? Was that Tartan no, no, fucking no, Swahili or something? The hell, like? we were actually. He knew. They all knew. <laughs> Did anyone not understand what Johnny said there? Yeah. It was like a how ran it her. What's up, Mara? Yeah. So um, yeah, the the whole thing at Durham was uh, yeah, it was quite it was quite sad really, um, and I didn't I didn't believe I should have been dropped from. I think it was like four games into the the first for the first year. I think it was 2016, uh, but before that, there was a lot of hoo-ha about all the um, all the financials running around the running around the club, doing X, Y, Z. Collie came back in from the uh, international duties, and vice versa. So once you come from international duties, you 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 get paid quite well. Um, so I think a lot of it, a lot of the decision making from when I got dropped from Durham was. A lot to do with a financial, uh, a financial thing rather than a uh, rather than a cricket, a cricket matter. But um, yeah, it was it was quite sad, really. Um, but uh, that's all it was when I left Durham. Collie pulled me one side on the bus, said, "Oh, you're not playing, you're not playing in the next game." Uh, and then I spent the whole year doing second team cricket. But is that financial, or or, or is it we are trying to? W did you feel as though that was uh, we're trying to get you out the door here? Yeah? Did you have a certain amount of time left on your contract? I remember being sat right because I remember this coming out of the team and we were sat at Southport. We played a, a four day game in Southport. Um, sorry, we will we will break shortly. Um, but I, re I remember this coming out and we were sat at Southport against Lancashire in a four day game and we were just sat in the outfield day one. And I think that's when it got brought up. I'm like, oh, look, lads, look, Colonel is he's, he's about to... He's, he's, I don't even know if you played... Did you play that game? Uh, I can't remember if you played or not, but but it was... it was Colonel, it's not going to be here for the rest of the year. And I think everyone 
was shocked by it. Um, because to me, it came as a shock. And I'm, I'm sure, uh, like, without, I don't know, without blowing smoke up your ass too much, like, you, you were what Durham was all about. Like, you had fun, played the game, you loved the place, you were successful. Um, so when it came out, it was like, oh, that's weird. Um, and then, you obviously, you went and played, a, I think you went on loan to Gloucester for the rest of the year and did all right, didn't you, in the, in the one-day stuff? Yeah, um, it was, yeah. Yeah, I think... But it, was, it, it yeah, just it was, felt it really, weird. It was really bizarre how it happened. It, there was nothing to it. There was nothing aggressive about it. They just said, you're not playing the next game. You're going to... We're going to uh, bring in Richo, I think it was. Um, and uh, and I'll tell you, I, I, was, I was quite well paid at that moment in time. And um, and it just came out of the blue. I wasn't expecting it. came out of the blue. We're not going to pick you. Um, and you're going to be playing in the second team all year. But we're still going to pick you for the 2020s. I was like, all right, okay, yeah, okay. So I just, just as you do, you take it, you go, yeah, no problem. A bit of a shock for the first couple of days. But then you, then you get used to it because I don't make them decisions. The captain made them decisions. That you've just got to respect what the captain, what the captain really says. All right, okay, yeah, no problem, that's fine. So I think I took about a week off after that, just to, because I didn't really want to be, didn't really want to be around the around the around the ground. Did or you go night clubbing? <laughs> no, I, I was with the family that I was I was with the family that week. Um, but yeah, it was um, yeah, it was really really bizarre how it all happened. <coughs> And then uh, I played the 2020s, which was, it was really funny how it all happened in the 2020s because um, Durham were doing, doing quite well. We were looking to get, uh, oh, no, no, we were doing bad. I think Durham weren't doing great. Uh, so that really didn't help my, uh, my cause to get a new contract because I would still play for a contract. Um, and then it, then it came because that was my benefit year in 2016. And I had... A 2020 game against Derbyshire, which was one of my benefit events, and I sold tickets. I had people coming in talking, and within two or three days of of, of that moment, um, I decided because Durham weren't going to qualify for the 2020. Well, mathematically, they weren't going to qualify for the 2020. So I knew I was going at the end of the year. So then I ha had me I had me agent looking at different things, different options, and Gloucester came in and says, "Oh, Durham are not going to." go to the 2020 but we are we're winning our our group and we're going to go through to the quarterfinals blah blah i says all right okay yeah yeah so you had to you had to look at the longer term future for myself and then you had to look at the the imminent thing that was going to happen if that makes sense and um so within within oh, within a day give or take i said to durham i'm leaving i'm off i'm going to cross on loan and that's all it is because my career not my career me the durham stuff was near enough finish i knew that um, and looking at the table, I think, oh, yeah, I might win a 2020 because I've never won a 2020. Although people might see me as a 2020 specialist or an open batter or whatever, but I've never won a 2020 tournament anywhere in the world. Um, so as it happened, I went down to Gloucester and they qualified, which we knew they were going to qualify anyway. But as it worked out, that Durham managed to scrape two victories and get into the get into the uh, 2020 quarterfinals. So that blew everything out of the water, really, because Durham were there, and they got drawn against Gloucestershire. <laughs> so so that was a really bizarre bizarre moment, because I couldn't play against Durham, because that was part of the, the loan agreement that if Durham qualified for the 2020, you can't play for, you can't play for uh, Gloucester against Durham, which is fair enough. So then... So I was at Gloucester for a week, give or take, a week. So then the 2020 came down. And as it happened, Durham turned over Gloucestershire. <laughs> so Durham turned that over Gloucestershire. That was one Glo of the drunkest <laughs> I've ever been that night <laughs> when we beat Gloucester. My oh God. God. So yeah, Durham turned over Gloucester in the quarterfinal. So that was me 2020 career bollocks even more. <laughs> so generally, yeah, I didn't make the right choice. I should have just stopped with Durham, but I was trying to look at variations and whatever else it is. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was a surreal thing leaving Durham, and it was really hard to take. And it probably took it probably took me a good winter to to figure out. I didn't have a job. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what am I going to do with my career here? Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was very very weird how it all happened. It wasn't the normal like you're underperforming, you're doing this, you're doing that, because you understand if you get dropped if you're not performing, and that's that's just what it is. But they still want to pick me in the 2020. So the, it, was a, it was bizarre. 
And yeah, it was surreal. I, d- I can't really explain it if that makes sense. Yeah. And have you played much since the end of your career? Since you've finished professionally? Do you do you um do much in cricket? No, involved no, in cricket? No, once I once once I went down to Gloucestershire, it was it wasn't really my I Was there a different culture? So at Gloucester diff- f- it was so different culture to to what the Durham culture was. Gloucestershire, the it was just it was a horrible place. Well, uh, the, the Gloucestershire, but the base in Bristol, so they get no supporters. They don't get any corporate people. Because I'm quite a, I like getting out and having to be with loads of different random people, people. with money. Aye, 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 aye. Well, yeah, I do. Yeah, we've I'm not gonna lie. I, I enjoy, I enjoy like freebies. I enjoy going have a few beers, meeting a few people. Um, but yeah, um, where was that? You hang on. I, I need to ask this. Because you lived with Cameron Bancroft for a while at Gloucester, didn't you? And we had bangers at Durham. I did. And he is the weirdest fucker you'll ever meet. I did live with bangers. And so I, I'd love to know how you got on with, with, with bangers. <laughs> Probably quite Because well. it, it is chalk and cheese. <laughs> this bloke is the most boring, the weirdest man you've ever met. In obviously, Colonel to Colonel. So how you'd live together. How did that go? Um, I tell you what, it went really well. <laughs> he, he was. No, it did. It did. He, I, I still keep in touch with him now. And. It, it went. It went well. We had a nice house. The house was lovely in Bristol. If you ever been to Bristol, and there's a place called Clifton, which is a fabulous place. So I had a fabulous house, big house. There was three of us in there. There was myself, Cameron Bancroft, and Glenn. Glenn Shaw, was it? Uh, oh, the young lad. Josh. Josh Shaw. Josh from Josh Shaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Josh Shaw. And it was and it was fabulous because bangers, bangers drank then. Bangers drank as well. So when when he decides to have a beer, he's probably one of the bad drunks. He's like he just goes off on like a he just goes on like a bit of a mission and he disappears. He never comes back. He he loves us. He's just he's just he is a he is a really fascinating character. If I put it nicely, but like he would he would go to like flotations and he'd go meditation centers and I say oh you come for me and no, I'm gonna go and have a massage. Okay yeah yeah. Oh, you come for me and no, I'm gonna go and have a coffee. Oh, you come for me and no, I'm gonna go and do this. And like he was so. Meditation, like he, he is a he is a he is a weird gimp. character. He's a gimp. <laughs> I wouldn't say. What, he, no, he is a gimp. Yeah, he's a weird character. That's what I would say. He's a weird. He's character. different. He's, he's very different. different, and he's all right. Yeah, he's and I live with him. And I, I, yeah, it, it was fine with Bancroft, but but Gloucester was a very different culture. Gloucester was culture. They didn't have a beer. The like after the dress. Uh, this is like what we do up here. After after a game. After a game. We will probably sit in the dressing room, have a beer, enjoy success, or whatever it is, and we all do that up here. That is just a given what we do in the northeast. Go down to Gloucester, you uh, you 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 win a game, you go in the dressing room. The showers don't work. It's a worse place. It's it's horrible place. The showers don't work. They've got nowhere to go for beer afterwards. The, they invite all the families into the into the dressing room with the dogs and the kids and do all this, and they're there for two hours, two hours. And you're just sitting there going, we've just won a game, a four-day game of cricket, which is the hardest thing to win and the most enjoyable thing to win. And I'm sharing a dressing room with dogs, kids, wives. You're thinking, this is not my culture, this thing. And that's probably why I did one year down there rather than two. And And that's probably why I retired. And then was that the finish? And that was a finish. That was my... That was my... uh, That was my... That would have been a fucking brilliant <laughs> way to end the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, whoever that was, that was crap. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> that was the end of my that was the end of my professional career. Um, and don't get me wrong, I think I, if I really if I really wanted to, I probably think I could still play now. Obviously, I'm not as fit as I used to be, but if I I still think I could still play now. <laughs> right, just dead quickly. Don't go off on fucking one for half an hour. Do you have any regrets on your career? Yes or no? No. Did you enjoy it? Yes. Fucking right. There we are then, ladies and gentlemen. The Colonel Phil Mustard. Yeah.